So I think we will start. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to this presentation about our new simulator. And please put your micro on mute. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to write them on the chat. We will answer all of them at the end of this presentation. And this webinar is recorded and will be available uh, on our YouTube channel soon. So now, Christian, you can begin. Good. So good uh, morning, everyone, or afternoon or evening. <laughs> depends on where you live. Um, so let me just switch to the next slide um, and display the proper title. Good. So today is, uh, is an interesting and exciting presentation about a new simulator we are um, offering now in our catalog of simulators. So we will go in details in the definition of that simulator see what he can and what he cannot do. And um, well, I, I'm, I'm just quite excited to, to see your feedback and, um, and I want to make sure it does fit your needs. So let's, um, let's jump and let's see what it's got. So quickly, um, just a uh, really small presentation about AV simulation. Most of you already know that company. It's been um, created two or three years ago now. Um, it, it, it used to be a portion of uh, Octal um, dedicated to the automotive market. It is still in the Soje Claire family. It's a really strong industrial group. And it's also owned uh, by uh, Group Renault at 35%. And within this Soje Claire group, it can also rely on the skills of uh, strong companies like Serra Engineering and Octal SE which are bringing really specific uh, know-how, tools, manpower uh, to help in the really strong projects we are working on. Now, this company is not really new and it's been delivering 80 or more than 80 now simulators um, since it was created. Um, it's a really wide kind um, of, uh, of simulation tools more than simulators. And, and these simulators are basically covering different continents, different skills, different um, fields of uh, experimentation. Um, so we, we are really proud to, to see that we've been delivering uh, simulators to, to car manufacturers, to their suppliers, but also to the academic fields where we are meeting really positive feedback from our customers. And there's really a community built on, on, on these um, users because these simulators, most of them, or 99% of them, are using Scanner Studio also. So there's a really strong community behind all of these drawings I'm going to, to, to show. And this is, of course, really stimulating and positive for, for us. Now, we've been delivering so many simulators. So we may wonder why actually these simulators do exist, what they can do for people like um, car manufacturers uh, in Australia or a research lab in uh, Norway or something in the US. We, we, now, the big question, I, I'm not going to, to spend too much, too much time on, on this question. Why simulation? Because, well, it's uh, most of the audience of today's uh, webinar are, are actually aware of the stakes here. But then, we, when we go back to these needs, it does help us to really find the right criteria when we are designing a new simulator. So of course it's a tool. It's only a tool, and um, and and then it it's really yes, depending on the needs. The needs are to to work to design on the new generation of vehicles. That's the main title, but also of everything what is inside and all the activities we are going to have inside the, these vehicles. So we, of course, we, we're talking a lot about the, the autonomous drive, how it will impact or completely explode the way we are living in cars, basically. So all these experiments are trying to validate uh, some assumptions or to, to completely destroy them if they're wrong. And for this, we need to run experiments and for these experiments, what a simulator can bring is quite simple. 
these three criteria, repeatability, safety, and full control, are the base for, for simulation. Repeatability is simply that, that you can run the same simulation exactly with 20, 200 people if, if you want. And you know that the sun will always be at the same position. The road uh, friction um, will be the same. The tire pressure or the tire temperature will be the same for all the, the, the drivers. And this, you can do it because indeed you do have a full control on what's going to happen because you can write what we call a scenario where you 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 are the the you are the god you can decide what will happen when it will happen and when you have the conjunction of repeatability and full control then you can fully design your experiment you can also do it in safety of course and then you can experiment you can try you can observe behavior in some dangerous situations which we would not actually afford to 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 test in uh, real life but these three only are really positive when you have efficiency. And efficiency does have an impact on today's topic because you can do all of these <clears throat> with many simulation tools. But then if it takes two hours to start a big simulator because of maintenance, because of strong safety procedures, um, and if you are only trying to get a five simulation driving session uh, maybe with two people, then it, it does take you quite a lot of time. And then, of course, the evaluation, uh, because we are again uh, providing a tool to validate an assumption, then at the end, you need to, to compute your, your data. You need to check if you did get what you want or if it's actually, yes, if the results are really meeting your, your requirements. And if all these steps, preparing, running, and analyzing are not efficient because everything or something, one of them is the weakest link and is taking you, you too much time, then you lose, you lose efficiency. So sometimes you need a really strong machine. Sometimes you only need something that's quick to start that can fit in a small room. And then of course you see the connection with today's topic. Then if we take a quick example of um, a net light simulator. Um, it does bring the three criteria I was mentioning, repeatability and full control and safety. Um, such a simulator is helping you getting rid of some physical prototypes in, in your development process. If you lower the number of prototypes and if you can do a portion of it in simulation, of course, you're saving money and time because uh, each prototype doesn't actually need to be made, and um, some suppliers won't be happy with it, or subcontractors, because you just don't need to do them anymore, and you can save weeks and months, and a lot of money. And of course, if you can run these simulations of uh, headlights, so if you can drive in the night in different uh, regions in the world with a few drivers you've selected, but if you can actually do everything at the same place, even during the day, then of course you don't understand you are saving flights, you are saving hotels, you are saving hours, you are saving cost because the people are driving, um, driving in the day instead of doing it in the night. So such a simple, basically, simulator is actually helping you to save so much money and time. And it actually, because it's a simulator, it's actually bringing you functions or features which would not even be possible in real life. Um, if you look at the on-the-fly comparison between models, that means that with a simple button in the simulator, you can just switch your headlights from one system to another one, meaning that you can really replace at the same spot one headlight model with another one and see exactly the, the effect of the n few models you, you selected. On a real hardware uh, bench, that would take a few minutes or hours to, to, to install, to calibrate, then it's a question of milliseconds on a simulator. So sometimes, I'm not saying simulators are perfect, but then it does bring you a few features which are even not possible in real life. 
and of course cost and time that's the the main aim of uh, simulators now it's it's really of, of course a need um for for many people in the world now it's now deep inside the development processes that simulation and simulators can help but of course as i said it's a tool and if you take a hammer and if you have a screw in front of you then it's not going to fit really is it so the big question is really now to make sure that the, the tool is fitting the need and sometimes we can wonder if big small what, what is actually the, the the big one and one of the design or actually defining criteria for for simulation can be the motion system so is it really necessary no you don't really need a motion system um it's it's not what is going to drive but of course when everyone is driving we are getting these cues and simulation is all about providing these cues to the driver so we do it for visual systems of course so we we do give images to the eyes we do it with the sound we do it with feedback systems uh, we, we do provide a seat um, and a sitting position and the motion system is of course bringing this motion and some simulation tools don't have any any motion system so how required is it how important is it it's not bringing the I say outside the essential cues, but it's giving you something. And because driving is all about the control loops in the driver's mind, if you don't give something, something is missing. And sometimes you can compensate for motion, for kinesthetic uh, feedbacks with other systems. But let's not, um, yes, spin it too much. It's really bringing something more into in immersion. So immersion is really wide term. It can cover psychological, uh, physiological, um, physical. Uh, it, it can cover everything. But then, of course, if one of the cues is missing, or even if you're trying to replace it with someone else or something else, uh, another stimuli, it's not really working as well. So, of course, you get something more in immersion. And there's two others which are really all linked all together. Because you have immersion with the motion system, you get comfort. Um, and let's not again spin it too much. Simulation sickness, and that's the big spot here. And if you have motion system, I'm not going to, to present it for hours. And this is a really, really nice and wide uh, topic. But then motion systems do um, help to kill the simulation sickness. So if you get, again, a tool, and if you get 20% of your driver's um, data, which you need to just put in the bin because people got sick or didn't feel well, then you are wasting time and money again. So the less you, you get uh, sick people in a driving simulator, the best and the most efficient it, it is for, for your work. And it's also helping to actually do longer runs because even on a bad simulator, maybe people will be able to, to drive for one, two minutes and then feel sick afterwards. Um, but then maybe it's sufficient for, for the few minutes you are started with. But then motion systems enable you to have, yes, indeed, more comfort for the drivers and then longer runs without people getting sick. And the third one, and you see they're all connected, is about the realism of the driver's behavior. Because let's be honest, within these three, what you are really looking at is this driver's behavior. Because you, you, you may be doing two types of experiments. One is you're really looking at the driver's behavior, defining patterns, defining or trying to get into the driver's psychology, um, really focusing on the drivers himself or herself or you are analyzing the the um, interface between the driver and the new system you are applying in the in the vehicle could be ADAS systems could be infrastructure communication with your car or anything but then in that case if you're not really interested in the driver's behavior you wouldn't be using a driver in the loop simulator so we are really looking at this one 
And because this one is deeply impacted by the immersion and the comfort, then of course motion systems is, is helping. But that's not a big secret, and I'm not really <laughs> providing a really fresh new piece of information here. This is why motion systems are present on the big, big simulators, and small simulators depend. But now, <clears throat> this is coming into the design of a simulator. And if we go back to the root again, um, let's see why every simulation is offering such kinds of uh, simulators. We've been indeed delivering simulation systems for more than 30 years, and simulators for 20 years. We are editors of the Scanner Studio uh, software uh, suite, uh, which has been used now in the whole world, all continents, uh, all types of uh, users. And we have also this team of, um, of engineers and technicians who can come and help uh, either in the software, hardware, simulators, or even services. And this is covering the full life cycle of simulators from the basic design down to the, the maintenance uh, of, or even overhaul of existing simulators. <coughs> and then based on this, we can really make sure that we do design simulators with or without motion systems, but most of them, let's be frank, have motion systems. And, and this is how we got to this range of uh, simulators. So this range of simulators, we have compact, we have full-scale and advanced simulators. So today we are focusing on one uh, type of compact simulators, which are basically covered by the SimEasy. We did a presentation about this a few weeks ago, and uh, we'll probably uh, provide a, a link um, in, in the description on, or in the video somewhere. And the new one is a SimPrime or SimPrime Plus. So there's two models here. I'm really going to focus on SimPrime Plus because that's one I'm most excited about. And uh, But then we, we will show this one more in uh, detail. Then again, now you, you've seen it. It's a, it's a, it's a compact uh, cockpit on a motion system. Then which kind of use cases might be addressed by such a compact simulator? Um, the main one or the main two ones would be human factors again. Again, we're talking a lot about driving driver in the loop simulation. This is mainly uh, targeting these two needs, um, either focusing on the driver behavior only, or looking at the driver behavior and how it's impacted by um, new systems. Um, can be in the big family of ADAS, can be uh, intelligent transportation systems. It can be even like um, new headlight technology and a new way of communi bringing communication to the driver. But it can also be addressing these uh, studies on the powertrain. When you want to assess a new strategy for your hybrid car or new ways um, of interacting between the driver and powertrain, again, um, this is fully in, in the scope of these simulators. Training for professional drivers is um, a field which can be addressed by these simulators because we are providing the minimum cues uh, for an, a valid uh, way of uh, driving. If something is missing, again, in, in terms of cues, um, it's difficult to assess really the, the quality of the driver's performance. Um, but now these simulators are, are actually giving them. Infrastructure planning and traffic safety, that's a, including all the, the studies on the building of new roads, um, new cities even, um, and how it's um, impacted either, either the, the traffic efficiency or traffic safety. Um, so these, these two are, are part of the, the, the specifications again for, for these simulators. And multi-simulation and preparation, this is valid for these simulators, which can be connected because they are running at the heart uh, the Scanner Studio software, which is the same as small, medium, and big simulators. And with a simple setup, you can really connect several simulators all together. It's good to play. <laughs> we do it in the office, let's be honest. But it's also um, enabling you to bring real drivers into the traffic. 
So sometimes it's really critical to make sure that one driver is going to do exactly what you want in the traffic surrounding the ego car. So we have these setups when um, the assessed driver or the trainee is driving in a simulator uh, with a more complete setup, probably with a full cockpit. But in the next room, we have one uh, operator, or one trainer, who's actually driving one of the cars within the same simulation. And this type of simulator is really giving you everything you need, even for a quite dynamic um, driving session. Um, if you look at uh, police training or emergency training, this is um, the kind of simulators um, our customers would, uh, would look at. And these, these use cases, these fields of uh, application and these uh, skills on your side, we can, uh, we can address them from the design to the end of life. Um, so it, it can be used by addressing or evaluating concepts within uh, the simulation sessions models if they are a bit more mature or even software if some software has been developed and uh, is almost ready to be shot uh, on uh, on hardware and then hardware if the ecu is fully ready and then you you want to test it but then these four steps in the development process can be covered by uh, such simulators so now let's look at the simulator itself let's go a bit deeper in in the details so we wanted to have one simulator which would be of course giving realistic driving sessions um, again getting back to the root specifications it's it means providing the proper cues it means putting the driver in a um, psychologically realistic situation which is not easy and of course, you need to get on the uh, seating position, all, all the feedbacks, uh, the pedals at the right position. Everything needs to be uh, putting the driver in the good state of mind. A good, and then we wanted something that's ready to run. Ready, meaning that you, in a few minutes, you can really start it. And when it's delivered, everything is in the box. Then the cockpit, the, all the computer system, and the software and the content, everything is inside. We wanted something still that would be movable because of course we, we do provide big simulators and sometimes we do build the building around the simulator because they're so big and so intensely acting on, on the floor. But then sometimes, and this was the target for this one, we wanted something that could be moved for, from one room to another one in a day. So meaning that you can have it in the lab for, for six months because you are really covering one project, one research project from day to the morning to evening. And um, it can be set up really quickly. We can do a few tests in the morning and then leave it. And then two weeks after we can use it again. But then at the end of the project, when it actually is done and when you reach the target of your project, we wanted it to be possible to move it to another lab and without doing any modification to the floor or the walls we wanted something simple but then again still accurate and still realistic so we wanted also something that's looking good but not for me because i would be happy to have a nice uh, simulator but because the design or the shape or even the aspect of that simulator is actually acting on the psychological fidelity. If the driver is moving to the car or is moving to a box, it's not the same. So when you move to a simulator, the way you look at it, even from a distance, um, is, is giving you ideas or is giving you maybe fears. Maybe you think, oh, it's going to make me shake too much or it's going to, to make me sick some people know about uh, simulation thickness and would be afraid why not some people will see cameras and will feel stressed because they know they will be sort of inspected and then we wanted to to remove all of these and to make sure that it was looking good and that the people would not be yes thinking of simulation more than driving so the design of a simulator is really helping on, on this factor 
and for this, we wanted something that's reliable um, because we can't really afford to, to send simulators to all parts in the world uh, without really trusting what we put in the box. And still within all of these, we wanted something that's pretty small and compact because it's the kind of simulator that's having these needs. So the, the target was to have a three by six uh, meter footprint so it can fit in kind of any room. And, um, and the weight is about 500 kilograms. So now, let, now let's look at these simulators. So Sim Prime is the simulator uh, shown on the top right here. So it does have this really huge uh, display system on a nice cockpit, which itself is um, installed on a compact motion system. But it does also come with uh, all the computer system, which is embedded in this uh, black PC rack. And it does come with, for, with the equipment to, to have a supervision console, because again, it's not a toy, it's an experiment tool and someone will need to start, stop, analyze the data, and, um, and that the, the, the desk is uh, made for, for this. So we will go um, and, and look at the different parts one by one. So the, the first one, of course, is uh, the most interesting one for the driver, that's the cockpit. So the cockpit is based on real car uh, parts from uh, vehicles you can actually see in the, in the streets. So everything you still hear, you see here, apart from the white parts, are apart from existing cars. So the seat is a real seat it does come with a real seat belt. The shifting lever, the central console, the instruments cluster, the steering wheel, even the part of the dashboard are from existing cars. Uh, which you may actually be driving every day. So it was important for, for this kind of simulator, we do even more compact simulators which don't have these, but then when you really want to put your driver in a, the driving atmosphere, everything like this is giving a small cue to the driver's mind. And then if everything is at the proper place, feeling that like the proper rubber or leather, this is giving um, stimuli to the driver to again put him or her back into the driving situation. Um, of course, we do equip it with motion or with no with uh, feedback systems, um, so the pedals um, can be two or three because it does exist in uh, automatic gearbox or manual. But then the pedals are fitted with the feedback systems. The steering wheel, of course, is connected with a motor to a scanner studio. Um, the cockpit itself is available in right-hand drive, left-hand drive. Um, the sound system is hidden inside the cockpit. So you see it's really a portion of the car that's been cut and everything is hidden inside. So you don't see the cables. You, you can even put some more cameras. You can fit some sensors like physiological, like eye tracking systems. But the, it's really a portion of the car we, we did provide. So the, the driver is really sitting in a car and driving. If we look at the motion, the, the visual system, because you can see it's quite big, it's big and extremely powerful because it's three times 4K. It's, of course, it's pulling a lot of uh, workforce for, for the computer systems, but then um, we wanted something that's really accurate and um, such a three times 4K system is really giving you the best display. And it's really critical when it gets to reading signs on the road. Well, I, I know I'm talking to many simulation experts, so I'm not going to, to explain why visual is important in driving. But then we wanted something that's really fine, um, accurate, and, uh, and yes, with valid uh, colors. It's giving a 60 hertz display and because 4K is really intense for, for the simulation uh, heart and, uh, and for the computers, we, we actually associate it with a really strong computer system. And then there's one computer per screen. So three times 4K means also three computers for the visual display only. Um, it's covering a 150 degree field of view. And I think it's something like 28 uh, for vertical. Um, it's really important again, because 
when, when you get to a T-cross, you, you need to make sure that everything you have coming on the right and left is visible. And um, yes, the, these, um, these displays are giving you what you need to, to drive um, properly and safely. Then when we also look at the computer system, because I mentioned it, it's, you can see it um, in, in this um, simulator setup. It's coming in a full rack when all the cablings are, are hidden. It's actually including four uh, iHand workstations, so three are dedicated to the visual system, and one is coming for supervision and for the, the dynamics engine of uh, Scanner Studio. It also comes with uh, two um, monitors for supervision, and uh, but then the desk and the chair are provided by the customer because most of the time you do have everything everything available, or oh, and it doesn't make sense for every simulation to just buy and sell uh, such chairs and, and desk. We we can do do it of course. We're actually working on a more advanced console. Um, but then the computer system is including these screens and the, all the, the mess in a PC rack, we do it. So we do the, the network, we do the cabling, we do everything, and it comes in a nice uh, organized and industrial PC rack, as you see it. Then let's focus on the nice part, the motion system. The motion system is a six DOF motion system, which is what can be it is the best solution here because um, it's really giving you all the cues. You can see the six degrees of freedom, so it's moving on the three translations and three rotations, giving up to 0 0.3 g. Uh, for such a compact system, it's uh, it's really really interesting because then you will be able to provide these cues you need to make sure that the driver knows exactly when he or he, she starts braking or when the curves are, are really impacting the road of the car. And this is part of the control loop that's required to make sure that the driving, driving um, uh, action, the driver's actions on the controls are accurate. So again, back to the start, it's not necessary, but then if you're really looking at the interactions between the driver and the car, in terms of accelerations, uh, curves, or even feel on, on the driver on, on the road contact, then you need to, to provide this to, to the driver. And such a system is, of course, better than the other ones, <laughs> let's say it, because three or four degrees of freedom are not giving everything. With that one, you can give um, this feel or this cue when you are on a roundabout this feel about the real start of the braking action on the on the vehicle model and this is given by such a such a system still it's really compact um, and what's really important no anchoring is required for the floor interface meaning that you can really transport it into a new room and leave it down uh, it's coming with a few wheels and a lifting system but then if you put it in a, in a room you only need to plug the power sockets and then it can start again. And all the motion settings are available in Scala Studio. You, it comes with a preset uh, made by AVS Expert and you can fully modify it and, and copy and paste to, to have your own um, calibration of the motion system. And on top of this, we added one vibration system because to cover the NVH um, or range we we have this system which is possible well it's capable of uh, providing the the large and uh, intense cues we see on that table but then we also wanted something that's giving the uh, medium and higher frequencies and really close to the driver so we have a vibration pod installed in the in the driving cockpit on top of the motion system so everything here we we can see drives with a uh, software and um, the software is also included. So of course it's uh, Scanner Studio. It's including everything you need for such a simulator. And because it's quite intense, again, four computers, three dedicated to the visual systems. It comes with a core of Scanner Studio plus uh, visual modules because you have more computers and more screens. 
uh, the motion module, of course, and the fit for feedback features because of the strong uh, steering wheel system. And the configuration files um, for, for this simulator are already available in the scanner installer. So as, as soon as you install a scanner, you will get all the, the settings prepared for, for this simulator. You don't need to fine tune, or of course you, you can tune your simulator, but then it's coming with a scanner studio fresh install and all the, the settings are available. Then in terms of pricing, because that's the heart of all, Sim Prime Plus is available at 129,900. Uh, X works Paris um, because, well, if you live in Paris, then we can make a, a good price. If you live in China or Australia, of course, we we need to take the the shipping into account. But then Sim Prime Plus is this simulator, including everything: the driving cockpit, the motion system, the huge visual system, computer, and the supervision console. Um, this is all in in these 129,900 uh, euros, and um, you also get a, an additional discount for um, industrial customers um, on any additional licenses you you might uh, purchase in the same time. And for academic customers, we also have the student pack, which is uh, a common uh, usage and I buy simulation for 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 you, and this is giving you everything you, you see on the picture. But then because we also wanted to get a more affordable price for some which might not be interested immediately um, in this motion simulator, we also offer Sim Prime, which is uh, basically the same simulator without the motion system. And um, it's still possible to upgrade it in a second phase with the motion system, um, but then Yes, we wanted to, to get something really affordable, and then at 89,900 euros, you, you get the full setup, meaning full simulator, license, computers, and everything is uh, pre-cabled and uh, waiting for you in a box. And this is including all the software and the hardware warranty, and even the maintenance for one year with the Scanner Studio SLA 1. And then you get a full access to AVS hotline to the support team as uh, usual. So I, th I think this is really quite an incredible offer because for such a price, you get everything from hardware to software service. And uh, we try to put all our expertise in the design and fine tuning of each of these components. Um, so now I, th I think I will hand um, the, the microphone over you and see if any any questions are raising. Uh, we we have uh, we have some minutes to 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 cover anything that any question that may come, or if you if you want um, any additional piece of information. So Laura, I didn't follow the questions in the chat, so I don't know if anything did come up. So. Um... I don't see any question for now. Mm. I'm actually struggling a little just to display this. Oh, yeah. yes. uh, there's one. Uh, it is the price of SIM Prime Plus is the same for the universities. Um, that's a big question. We're actually trying to uh, make a slightly even more efficient discount for the universities. So some, th this will be um, in our sales guys' hands. Um, we are preparing a specific uh, price tag for universities, and there will probably something um, probably be something a bit more even a bit more interesting for for universities. So the base price is this one twenty nine nine hundred um, for industrial customers, but we are fighting to 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 get something a bit more, even a bit cheaper for for universities indeed. Okay, uh, can Tim Prime be purchased without Scanner Studio? Um, 
Yes, that's a common question that's coming indeed sometimes. And we did cover it with Simizi, and Simizi was really designed um, to, to be a smaller simulator. And it's actually based on USB standard components. So Simizi is compliant with, uh, with other simulation software uh, suites. Um, it's not really the case for, for SimPrime Plus because we really want SimPrime Plus to, to be a higher grade in terms of um, quality for the components. And then we leave the, the, the field of existing parts. So we had to, to work a bit deeper with uh, our engineers. And then it's not, it, it's, some parts would be uh, technically uh, connectable or compliant with other software. But now let's face it, we don't want this one to, we, we don't want to waste time on trying to adjust it to other software suites. So Prime Plus is really working with the Scanner Studio. Um, then it's in your hands to, if you want to, to see, but then now for us, it's really a product and we want to make sure it does run every time, every morning when you start it up. So I have another one. You have mainly presented a new hardware co cockpit, but what about software parts? What will be the functionalities included in the Scanner Studio platform? Oh, right. Um, um, yes, indeed, uh, because um, this simulator is uh, compliant with Scanner Studio, meaning that it's compliant with Scanner Studio 1.9 update, which is the latest version, and it will be compliant for the next ones. We will keep it compliant for the n latest uh, releases of uh, Scanner Studio, so it it, it is uh, fully connected to the um, driver. Uh, module of Scanner Studio. So, of course, you can interact with other buttons, pedals, steering, um, even displays in, in the cockpit. And uh, the visual system is, uh, of course, displaying the best uh, <laughs> provided by Scanner Studio. So, it's using a stock version of Scanner Studio, and we will maintain it so it does uh, fully comply with the latest release of, uh, of Scanner in the future. Um, all right, so I have another one. Hello, you mentioned you have a vibration system. What is the frequency range and bandwidth? Thanks. Yes. Um, so for this, the such motion systems uh, indeed um, are covering the lower frequencies without any trouble. Um, then usually the, the idea is to get up to 10 or 15 hertz stops. This is why we associate it with a vibration system. So the idea is that they, they would combine and, uh, and associate. So when, when we go for lower frequencies, we use the motion system and from 15 hertz and tops, we, then we go with a vibration system. So it's, there's virtually no limit. Um, the, the idea is for, for, for the, the concept for, for driving simulation is usually to also be able to render the road friction and road contact vibrations, which are between 20 and 30 hertz. And uh, this is um, realized by the vibration system and not by the motion system. Okay, so I have another question about the functionalities. Uh, is immersive functionalities proposed like Oculus or HTC Vive Albert? Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, we, we, we have a really strong computer system associated to, to this simulator um, with uh, really crazy uh, workstations for, for the visual system. And then it's possible we, are, we have actually uh, started uh, a few years ago um, to, to work with the companies developing new um, virtual reality or augmented reality uh, headsets. And um, by nature, um, Scanner Studio is compliant with, with the, the, the main ones like uh, Oculus and Vive. Uh, we are working with Vario or even new companies which are about to release some, uh, some products on the market. So as soon as it's uh, compliant with Scanner Studio, it will be compliant with uh, uh, this simulator. Then the question was for, for us to see 
if it was uh, interesting to dedicate one version of the simulator to virtual reality. And we think for the moment, maybe not. So we fully deliver it with a nice uh, visual system with a, with a front displays. But uh, then we can, on top of this, um, come with a virtual reality headset as a complement. But we didn't design one simulator without the front displays yet. Uh, we are waiting for, for solution, technical solutions in virtual reality headsets to, to be available before we actually get rid of the big uh, LED systems. Okay. Um, another one. Uh, is it possible to use only the software part? Um, for example, for massive automatic autonomous driving stack testing? It is, um, well, w when it's um, above or further than Scanner Studio, we, we, we will evaluate each um, configuration. Um, for, for this, we, we should uh, address it um, maybe by email or, or meetings or anything. But then, um, again, it's fully compliant with Scanner Studio. If it's something else, um, then we, we can see we're delivering um, a fully ready uh, Scanner Studio license on a USB dongle, um, which can be used for any experiment connected to anything that works with Scanner Studio. Um, but it's, if there's anything more, uh, then we can evaluate it with you. Okay. Um, is it possible to use several SIM Prime platform in the same time and interconnect them? Um, actually, yes. And um, oh, I didn't show the pictures, but we we actually did it um, in in the assembly and testing phase in our um, in our workflow. We 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 sometimes do it, and because again, it's a native solution provided by Scanner Studio, and because each Sim Prime Plus or Sim Prime uh, simulation cockpit is compliant with Scanner Studio then yes, um, any connection is only requiring this uh, network connection, but then all SIM Plus uh, or SIM Prime Plus and SIM Prime, uh, even with the, all the other solutions by uh, AV simulation, can be connected all together because they share um, Scanner Studio at the heart. Okay, and um, I have a last question. What is the delivery type? Um, so this is a tricky question in these days, and um, <laughs> everyone would, would want to have a, a huge stock of uh, ready-to-ship uh, containers. Um, so the, the idea in a standard uh, situation is to, to be able to deliver it in uh, three to four months, because um, well, actually what I didn't address is uh, the options. We, we can actually help you install this simulator in your premises, uh, everywhere in the world, as we have already done it, or it's available in uh, XWorks uh, as we showed it. But then, the the well, um, the the travel and installation on site uh, takes around one week. But then, um, this can be part of these three to four months. So today is really tricky, and we need to de to evaluate. Uh, our stocks and uh, interface with our subcontractors uh, on a daily basis, but um, it should be two, three to, to four months for, for fully delivered and installed simulators. Okay, um, I don't see other questions, so if you have any other questions, don't hesitate to write them in the chat so we can answer them. I will wait like two minutes and after we will end this meeting. So there is one more. For the price, do we have one license included? Yes, indeed. It's um, everything is included. So it's all the hardware, software, IT system, um, the box, uh, the maintenance, and the uh, warranty. Um, so all the software scanner licenses included inside the same price, indeed. So it's quite pleasant to, to get such questions because uh, indeed it's, uh, we, we did make a big effort on the price to make sure that it would be able 
uh, you, you would be able to actually see if it does fit your needs for your project and research. But we wanted to put everything inside one uh, price tag, make sure that everything as a ready to work um, tool would uh, be fitting your, your budget. So every simulation made a big effort on this, but we, we wanted to, to make sure everything would fit in, in one, indeed. So there is um, one more question for the license. Is it a one-year license? Yes, yes, indeed. So it's, well, basically it's a perpetual uh, license, um, but then you get um, maintenance for one year on Scanner Studio meaning that after one year you won't benefit from the updates unless you, you purchase a, a new maintenance contract for, for the years, uh, the following years. But it's coming for with a one year maintenance and warranty uh, scanner studio. So everything, all the updates and service uh, hotline uh, for, for one year with a scanner studio. So scanner studio plus warranty plus maintenance for one year. This is included. Um, and what is the price for one year maintenance? Uh, that's a really good question, and I don't actually have the answer for for this. So we will uh, we will get back to to you about this. So it's the standard price uh, based on the Scanner Studio catalog, uh, but I don't have in in my hands now. Don't hesitate to send us an email about it and we will answer you. So um, I don't see other questions, so I think it's the end of this presentation. Thank you everyone for attending it and um, don't hesitate to send us an email at contact at avcelimination.fr. We will answer you as soon as possible. And if you want to follow us, uh, we are we have one YouTube channel and we are on LinkedIn and there is everything about that. So. so you hear me? It's okay? Yes. Yes. So thanks a lot for this presentation, very interesting uh, presentation. And uh I I will probably send you a uh, email in order to have uh, Maybe uh, over information, and uh, it could be nice uh, and uh, possible to to have a demonstration and uh, to spend a bit of time in uh, your company in order to try uh, uh, physically uh, this platform. Sure, yep. we we are waiting for everyone. We actually have a showroom in Paris and another one in Detroit, and um, yes. Let, let's come. Let, let, let's meet. Um, that's the most convincing way to to really understand what's inside and what it can do for you. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. So, Laura, should we should we close the meeting then? I think we yeah, really address so. all the questions. Yes. Good. Okay. Bye bye. Oh, thanks a lot. Bye. See you Thank soon. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.